Hello folks, this is Mr. O'Brien and welcome to the video quiz about Tammany Hall, uh, Political Machines, and Boss Tweed. So let's get started. Alright, so a little background information on Tammany Hall. It was established in the late 18th century in urban areas, mostly New York City, for example, the, the most well-known, which would mean the late 1700s. Um, and you first begin to see its influence in elections uh, starting in about 1800. So what was it? Uh, a political machine is a party organization. Uh, it's headed by a, usually a single boss or a small group, and they command enough votes to maintain political and administrative control over a city, a county, or a state. In Boss Tweed's case, it would be New York City. Uh, it commands the support of a core of supporters and businesses, usually campaign workers, who receive rewards for their efforts. So it's kind of like a quid pro quo. You scratch my back, I scratch yours which is a phrase I've used before. Uh, the politician would say to his, say, Irish supporters or some type of immigrant supporters uh, who have very little in the way of resources when they come here. Uh, if you help me get elected, I will uh, help you get a job after I get elected. For example, patronage, it would be called. All right, it had tremendous influence in New York City. Uh, and it encouraged the public to vote for Tammany men. It was called Tammany Hall in New York City. And it would re reward voters with patronage, as I said, and many mayors of New York City and even governors of New York on the state level were Tammany men. Uh, they held tremendous influence throughout the 19th and early 20th centuries, all the way to the early 1900s. So let's talk about graft. What is graft? It's, the un it's unscrupulous practices examples, bribery, and other corrupt practices, used to secure illicit advantages or gains in politics or business, using our political position for, for personal gain in kind of a backhanded way. That's graft. All right. So during this era of political machines, which we normally think of as the mid-1800s to the early 1900s, uh, you began to hear some of these political machine operatives, these politicians, argue about honest graft versus dishonest graft. So let's look at the definition of honest graft first. All right, honest graft was using inside information for personal gain while also benefiting the public. That was their rationale to justify this. Hey, the public benefits, what's so wrong if I also benefit? All right. And the most infamous, most famous proponent of that argument would be George Washington Plunkett. All right, there you see him right there, and that is an awesome mustache. And let's quote him, and apparently he talks out of his, his cheek. These are his words, mostly. There's an honest graft, and I'm an example of how it works. Actually, these are all his, wor all his words. I might sum up the whole thing by saying, I seen my opportunities, and I took them. Just let me explain by examples. My party's in power in the city and is going to undertake a lot of public improvements. The city will. So, while I'm going to, well, I'm tipped off, say, that they're going to build, lay out a new park at a certain place. So that's inside information. He knows ahead of time that this land is going to become valuable. I see my opportunity and I take it. I go to that place and I buy up all the land I can in the neighborhood. Then the board of this or that makes its plan public, and there is a rush to get my land, which nobody cared particular for before. Ain't it perfectly honest to charge a good price and make a profit on my investment and foresight? Of course it is. Well, that's honest graft. So it, it, it's using your, your political position, inside information achieved because of it, for personal gain, but it's honest if it's also benefiting the public. Again, that was George Washington Plunkett and his awesome walrus mustache. Dishonest graft is, is stealing. It's, it's, it's taken to the extreme. Uh, it's more unscrupulous methods, such as stealing and bribery, and it's also disregarding the public benefit. And um, William Boss Tweed would be uh, an example of that type of graft if he were to buy George Washington Plunkett's distinction between honest and dishonest graft. All right. 
So let's get to a little bit about William Boss Tweed, the most famous member of Tammany Hall. He was the head of Tammany Hall, the head of a pl the political machine, the Tammany Hall. All right. Uh, it was called the Tweed Ring. He stole, by, in today's money, up to $200 million from New York City. That's the high end of the estimate, $200 million. The low end is about 30 to $50 million. All right. Uh, he, he basically would, would buy furniture, for example, on the city's money for his office, and his desk would be just, the price would be out of control. And he would pocket the difference. I mean, he would get the desk. It wouldn't be that much, as he said it was, and he would pocket the difference. He would offer high contracts for friends and workers, and he would take some of the money. He would overpay his friends for, say, construction projects, and he would pocket some of the money. All right? Using the city's money, using the taxpayer money. All right? A and he would, he would advocate uh, voter corruption uh, among the Irish, for example, get them to vote two or three times to win his elections. You know, he, he took advantage of the fact that, that he who counted the votes had the real power in New York City. All right, and Boss Tweed was not a man without enemies, as you would imagine. So uh, one example would be Thomas Nast, who, as you should know, is a, or was, a cartoonist for the Republican publication Harper's Weekly. Uh, he was a very influential political cartoonist, and there he is. And he was a staunch critic of Tweed and Tammany Hall. You also wound up with Samuel Tilden. A little background about him. Uh, he was a Democrat. Um, starting early on in the Democratic Party, 1830s, and in the 1840s and 50s, actually the 1850s, when many Democrats, Northern Democrats, began, who were against slavery, began to move to the Republican Party, he did not. He stayed in the Democratic Party. You also may remember him as being the Democrat who ran against uh, Rutherford B. Hayes in 1877. He got less popular votes, but if you remember, it was that election where the, the deal was made, whereby the Republican candidate, Hayes, who got less votes, wound up getting chosen as, as president if the North agreed to leave the South. The North, the, the, the military agreed to leave the South, which ended Reconstruction. All right, so Samuel Tilden, who was a state-level New York State politician, played a key role in Boss Tweed's downfall, who, remember, worked on the city level. So... Uh, Tilden was working uh, from Albany when, when Boss Tweed was, was, was in New York City. And that helped catapult him to de the Democratic nomination in 1876 and the election I just talked about before. All right, so Tammany Hall in the early 20th century. Uh, and specifically, I'm going to talk about the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. It was a horrible, horrific fire that happened, uh, you know, about 10 stories up in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory. It was a sweatshop, basically, of immi mostly immigrant women who made, you know, uh, shirtwaists, you know, uh, blouses that were tight at the waist, um, and very poor security, uh, safety precautions. Windows were locked, doors were locked, so when the, when the, when the sweatshop went on fire, they couldn't escape, so you had women jumping to their death out the windows. So it was, it was a tragedy. All right, the worst workplace disaster in New York City history until 9-11. Over 100-plus workers, mostly women, were, were dead. Now, to their credit, Tammany Hall played an instrumental role in new workplace laws after this fire, such as workers' compensation uh, laws, which means if you get hurt at work, you get paid, workplace safety regulations, less of them but some of them, and guaranteed time off of work, which becomes the weekends. All right. Uh, now, moving off of the Triangle Fire, uh, progressive political changes like the secret ballot, meaning uh, people don't know who you vote for when you do vote, that weakened the influence of political machines. You couldn't be pressured publicly or uh, at the polling station to vote uh, for a specific candidate. So by the 1960s, Tammany was no longer in power, meaning Tammany Hall, the machine, was no longer an effective machine. So some test tips. Essay topics, not likely on Tammany, him, Tammany Hall itself. Rather, it could be included into politics during the Gilded Age. Uh, some tips for multiple choice questions. Be familiar with political cartoons and Boss Tweed, some Thomas Nast cartoons. Uh, be able to recognize the cartoons about political corruption and, and, and political machines. And uh, make sure you know about Thomas Nast. All right. Be able to identify the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire as well. All right. So be sure to take the quiz that will pop up right now.